What's up everyone? I had mentioned in my previous video that I had learned Game Maker language, or I'm still learning, but I had learned so much through the YouTube tutorials and through the resources that other people have provided for free for people like myself who want to become game developers to learn. And so I want to do the same thing. I want to give back. I want to make some tutorial videos to help others learn how to make their own games and have fun being creative. So my game, it's very sprite heavy. And because it's so sprite heavy, I had to do a lot of sprite transition animations. But learning how to do sprite transition animations was real difficult because there's hardly any resources online about doing that. And I was kind of surprised because it is something that's so uh, essential to making a sprite-based game that I thought there would be a lot more information on it. There wasn't, however, and so it made it a lot more difficult to learn. When I did learn how to do it, it I found out it was actually really easy, but there was not, like I said, a lot of information online. And so the first tutorial video that I'm going to do is how to do sprite transition animations for Game Maker. I'm going to cover how I make the sprites basically in Photoshop. Just a real brief overview of that. And then I'm also going to show how to do it with code in GML. Okay, before I begin programming the sprite transition animation, I want to talk briefly about the sprites themselves. Here in Photoshop, where I make all my sprites, we have a monster character and it is facing to the right, and in-game if you're facing to the right and you turn left, then you we're going to make the character do an about face. They're going to turn around and look the other way. If they're looking left and you move right, they're going to turn around and then start moving. What I wanted to mention is that to do a transition animation, all you really need is one frame minimum, but if you're going to just do one frame, might as well at least, at least make it a three-quarter view. Because if it's a three-quarter view, then you can just do a horizontal flip and you get two for the price of one. You do work for one sprite and you flip it and you get two. Here I have three in this one. I have the three-quarter view, uh, a view where it's just looking straight ahead at you. And then I have the first frame horizontally flipped. So that's how this one is constructed, as you can see. Okay, let's program this. Before we do that, we got to make some sprites. I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call this group Scout Monster because this monster is a scout. It has to do with the story. Talk about that in another video. So now that we have this folder, I'm going to right click the folder, create sprite, and I'm going to call this SP for sprite, scout, um, idle. And the idle is here. Four frames in the idle animation. Center that. Repeat. I'm going to call this one Sprite Scout Transition because this sprite is going to hold the transition animation. Where is it? Here we go. The three frames right there, center that. And we're going to add one more sprite, and this is going to be Sprite Scout Walking. Then I'll load my walking sprite. And this is seven frames, I'm sorry, eight frames, zero to seven in this walking animation. It'll look nice and smooth. Okay, now that we have our sprites, before the object, we are going to make a collision mask that will apply regardless of what sprite is being played. So I'm going to call this SP Scout Collision. Let me find it. Here it is. Here's my collision box. So the sprite, no matter what the sprite is for the scout object that we'll be making, this is going to be the collision mask, unless we say so otherwise. So set that up there, make an object, we'll call this S Scout, and this object will have all the code for our monster. Default sprite will be idle. For the create event, we're going to add some variables. Variables. <clears throat> First variable will be move speed, and we'll set this to 6. Next we'll have HSPD, or horizontal speed, H speed, and we'll set this to zero. We will have, you're going to need some kind of facing direction for a transition animation. I like to use facing left. Set that to zero, and we'll also need a sprite previous variable. 
I'll explain why this is important a little bit later. Okay, next we will add a step event. Put some code in here. And control the scout monster is what I'll call this step event. And first we're just going to set some variables. We'll go left button will equal keyboard oh my goodness keyboard check and I'll just do VK or virtual key left which is the left arrow and right button will equal keyboard check virtual key right okay so you could look more into this if you want. There's a lot of documentation online. I'm not going to get too into it. I really want to focus on the sprite transition animation. But just know that left is the left arrow. Right is the right arrow key. OK, and here's idle. We'll say this is uh, no movement. If not left button, so if we're not pushing the left button and we're not pushing the right button, or, these two lines mean or, or we are pushing the left button and we are pushing the, we are pushing the right button, then what do we want to happen? We don't want to move and we want to be in our idle sprite. So we'll set the sprite index, index to sp scout idle. If you want to learn more about Sprite Index or one of these things, you can middle mouse click it. It takes you directly to the official documentation. Just a little tip there. Also, we want to set here the horizontal speed to zero. We don't want to move. And let me talk about that a little bit here. Actually, let me set the collision mask. Collision mask. Set collision mask. We'll go mask index equals SP scout collision this sprite that we set up right here. And at the very end of the step event, we want to do the gravity and actual collision. Gravity and collision. And I already have a script set up here called SCR gravity and collision. Parentheses to call the script. And in this script is a little gravity code that I wrote real quick, but this is the collision, horizontal and vertical collision code. It is pixel perfect by Sean Spaulding. It works perfect. Check it out. I'm not going to go over that right now though. Okay, so now let's move the Scout Monster. If we press left, left button, what do we want to happen? We want the spread index to change. We want it to be set to Scout walking and we want the horizontal speed to be negative move speed because we are moving to the left oops <laughs> move speed let me also set the image speed and I want to set this to 0.4 for now okay and then we'll just repeat this for the right button there are many ways to do this I'm just doing it this way because I feel like it's easy to explain and it, it works so and for when we push right we want positive move speed value so we move to the right okay so let me go into my room real quick that I set up for this tutorial oh and it's already there perfect and is it following yeah okay good to go there so let me show you what this code will do obviously there's no transition animation yet but this is to show what we're working with and how we can change this to how we want it specifically with the transition animation. Why is that image speed so fast? Anyway, so if we push right, we go walking. If we go left, we start walking again also. But as you can see, there is no horizontal flip in the sprite, which we want and which we will add. And uh, yeah, I did not add the image speed for the idle. We'll set this to point four. And I'm going to increase this a little bit. How about six for walking.
Okay, there we go. So the idle image speed is 4, a little bit faster at 0.6 for the walking sprites. <clears throat> okay, so here's where it's going to get a little tricky. A couple things have to happen at once for this to work properly. So I'm going to say if we push the left button and if facing left is false, as it is when we start the game, then we want to just walk. We don't want... Sorry, excuse me here. Let me set this up real quick. If we press the left button and we are not facing left, sorry, then we want to transition. So we press left but we're facing right, we need the transition animation. Else, let me clean this up a little bit. Else, if we are facing to the left when we push left, then we don't want to transition. We just want the walking sprite. Scout walking. And we'll just keep that at 6 for now. Image speed. We'll make that to 0.6. I'm going to speed up the transition just a little bit. Let's make it point. Eight. There we go. Walking set to 0.6. So no matter what though, regardless of the sprite that we are in, we want to have the same horizontal speed. That's why this isn't changing. So if we press left and we're facing right, we're going to transition. If we press left and we're not facing right, we are already facing to the left, then we're just going to go into the walking sprite. And we'll just I'm just going to copy paste this for brevity. Okay, so if we press the right button and we are facing to the right, then we don't want to transition. We just want to go straight into walking. If we press the right button and we are facing to the left, then we want to transition. We want to turn around. Let's see here. Get rid of this one. Get rid of this one. Tab over. There we go. Okay, so these two do the same thing, just kind of switched. So I'll go over this one more time. If we face, if we press the left button and we're facing to the right, then we transition. If we press left and we are facing to the left, then we're just going to walk. Conversely, for the right button, if we press right and we are facing to the right, then we're going to walk. If we press right and we're facing to the left, then we'll transition. Here's here's where it gets a little bit more tricky. I'm going to add an event. I'm going to add a draw event. Whenever you add a draw event, we call this debug. Whenever you add a draw event, the sprites set in the step event will not be drawn unless you have the draw self. Oops. Unless you have this draw self function here. Okay, I also want to draw some text. Draw text. I'm going to draw this x, comma, y plus how about 24. And we want it to draw the value of the image index. And I'll explain why this is important right now. Okay, the way GameMaker does it is that, let's say, for example, you are in the idle sprite frame 3 and you go to the next sprite which is walking for example the walking sprite will start at frame 4 also the image index does not return an integer it returns a real number so we have this actually so we have basically fractions or decimals and that can cause problems in code if you're not prepared for it if your code doesn't take that into consideration I like to do something uh, slow motion version. Let's call it slow motion. So if we press F1, then the room speed, I'll set this to 4. So it'll be basically 4 frames per second. If we press the F2 key, regular room speed, then it'll go back to regular room speed. Room speed, which is 30 or 30 frames per second. 
So now when we run it, what I like to do in my game, because it's so animation heavy, there's so many sprite transitions and a lot of different sprite things are happening at once. I like to sometimes, when there's an issue, I like to draw the sprite index, sorry, the image index, and I like to slow it down like this so it shows me exactly what frame we're on. And as I said before, if we're on idle and it's on frame two, if you go to the next sprite, the next sprite, like walking, for example, will be f number three. Let's see if I can time this right. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two. There it goes. So see, the walking started at three. Two, three. Zero, one, two. There it goes, see? And then just press F2 to set it back. Okay. Actually, let me run this one more time. <clears throat> so in our step event here, we have transition animations, but it's not going to lead into a walking animation. If we're facing to the right right now and we press right, it goes straight into walking, no problem. If we're facing right and we turn left, however, we'll go to the transition animation, but it's not going to the walking animation. And that's what we are going to fix right now. Okay. Let's see here. If, if left button is pressed and we're facing to the right, we need to go to the Sprite Scout Transition Sprite. So the reason why I was drawing the image index is because of this. Because let's say we are in idle Sprite 2 and we go to the transition sprite. The transition sprite will begin at frame number 3. So we got to change that. So I'm going to say if, and here's where the sprite previous variable comes in. If sprite previous does not equal sprite index, then we'll do something. Actually, let me add this. So whenever it's idle, we need the idle sprite to be the sprite previous variable. Sprite index. So if we're in idle, then sprite previous variable will be the idle sprite. If we're going to the transition sprite, and sprite previous is not the transition sprite, which is our sprite index, then we're going to want to set the image index to zero. And this will ensure that for the very first frame only, the image index will be zero, which means that when we go from idle to transition, the transition sprite will begin at image index zero, which is what we want. Let me tab this, tab this over a little bit. There we go. And I'll just go ahead and place this in here. Let's make it a little more consistent or clean. And we're going to repeat this every time there is a new sprite being set. So if we are here and walking, same thing. There we go. But for walking, we want the image speed to be 6. There we go. Don't need this one. Okay, now let's go through this. If we press left, and when we're pressing left, if we are facing to the right, then we need a transition. And if we're transitioning, if, if sprite previous does not equal sprite index, which means if this isn't the first time I'm sorry, if this is the first time that this sprite is being played, then we need the image index to be zero, and we'll set the image speed right after that. If we press left, and we are facing to the left, same thing. We, we're going to a new sprite, we're going to walking from idle, and so we want to sprite, we want to check if the sprite previous is the current sprite, which is walking. And if it's not walking, so therefore if the walking sprite is new, we want that to start at the very beginning, which is image index 0. And we also want to do this for if we're pressing right. So I'm just going to copy this here. Actually, I'll just write it out. So if we're facing, if we press the right button and we're facing to the right, then we'll be walking. And if 
sprite previous does not equal oh my goodness sprite index then oops one two three four five six okay then we will set the sprite I'm sorry we'll set the image index image index to zero Actually, one more thing I forgot to mention. Every time you have a new sprite, you got to set that new sprite. So you set sprite previous to the current sprite. That way, Game Maker can keep track of which is the new sprite and which is the previous sprite. Equals sprite index. Copy this. There we go. And then we'll do it for if we are facing left. If if spray previous does not equal spray index, then same thing. Image index. We want it to begin at zero. Set the image speed to 0.6. Could get rid of this one. And we set sprite previous to sprite index. Okay, actually, oops. because the order that you place this in matters. I forgot the sprite previous line of code actually needs to be immediately after. Actually, let's see. Sprite previous. Actually, no, that's, that's right. That's fine. All right. Is that good to go? Sprite. Oh, here we go. Sprite previous. There we go. It is getting complex. I know transition animations are... Uh, I can kind of see why there was very little information online. And this is just how I do it. Okay, what is wrong here? I'm missing something. Okay. This one. Oh, wait, no. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Is it here? Nope. 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 Huh. Okay, what did I do? Unexpected symbol in expression line 38, really? Sprite previous equals, 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 equals. Okay, great. H speed, move speed, previous. Sorry about this, everybody. Huh. Image index, image index equals, spray previous equals, H speed move speed. What am I missing? Huh. Equals spread index. Zero. Image speed equals eight. Spread previous equals spread index. Else. Sprite index is walking, and if sprite previous is not equal, sprite index. Oh no. No. Okay. Good. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll go through this one more time, and then we'll try it out. So if you press the left button, and we are not facing left, then we're going to do the transition animation. And if the sprite previous variable is not the sprite index, which is a transition animation, because at this point it's the it's the idle sprite, then we're going to start at subimage zero. We'll set the image speed to 0.8, and importantly, now the transition animation is the sprite previous variable. And if we're pressing left and we are facing left, then we're going to go into the walking sprite. And if the walking sprite is not sprite previous, 
then we are going to start at image index 0. Set the image speed, and now Sprite Previous is now the walking sprite. Again, another one. Did I really do that? Need another one? Of, oh, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so if we press the right button and we are facing to the right, then we're just going to go into walking. But we don't want the walking sprite to begin at whatever the last sub-image was plus one of the previous sprite. So we want to check if the sprite previous is not the walking sprite, then we'll start at zero. We set the image speed, and now the new sprite previous variable is sprite index, which is walking. And if we press right and we're not facing right, we're facing to the left, then we want to transition. And if the sprite previous is not the transition animation, then we want the transition animation to begin at zero. We'll set the image speed, and now the sprite previous variable is the sprite index, which is a current sprite, which is the transition one. Okay, one more thing we got to do for this to work correctly. Actually, let me show you what we got here. So we're not done yet. There's still going to be a little problem, but we're getting there. Okay, now when we press right, we start walking. Now we're facing to the right, and when we push left, we go into the transition animation, but it's not going into the walking animation, which is what we want. So let's do that right now. And there's different ways to do this. I'm going to use an animation end event. And the animation end event runs every time a sprite ends. So I'll just call this a transition sprite to idle sprite. So every time, so the animation end event, it runs every time a sprite ends. And we only want this code, however, to run if the sprite index is the transition animation. Scout transition. So if when this code runs, the, the sprite index is the transition animation, then we want the sprite index to be the idle sprite. Scout idle. Because after the monster turns around, when it's done doing the about face, we want it to just be at the idle sprite. Let's see here. Let's actually do this also. We'll say if facing left is false. So if at the end of the transition animation, if at the end of the transition animation we're facing to the right, then facing left has to be true now. So and when we're done turning around, now we are facing the other direction else facing left equals false. So if we weren't facing to the left at the end of the, of the transition animation, we are now. That's basically what that means. Let me tab this over a little bit. I'll just leave it like that. Okay. Let me just double check this. Okay, we're facing left and that. Got it. Double check this transition animation. Okay, good. Let's see here. Did I add? Okay, one more thing. This is going to control the horizontal flipping of the sprite. Horizontal flip. Say horizontally flip the sprite, and I'm going to say if facing left is true, if we are facing left, 
then we want the image x scale to equal negative 1. Image x scale just controls how stretched or squished horizontally a sprite is. If it's set to a negative number, then it's reversed. So negative 1 is just a simple horizontal flip. Horizontal flip. That's all image x scale negative 1 means, do a horizontal flip. Image, x, image y scale equals negative 1 would be a vertical flip, for example. So if we are not facing to the left, if we're facing right, then our image x scale will just be 1, will just stay the same because all our sprites are facing to the right. All right, let's see how this works. Crossing my fingers. Good. Turn around. Good. Turn around. Good. There it is. So we're idle. If we're idle and we're facing to the right, we walk. If we're facing idle and we're facing to the right, and we go left, we turn around, and when that animation ends, we go to idle, and because we're pushing left, then it goes to walking. See? There it is. Hope that was helpful, everyone. I'll actually, I wasn't going to, but uh, I'll actually link the code without the sprites. Actually, no, no, because there's too many sprites here, and the sprites are for sale, sorry. If you like this video, I'm really glad. I hope it helped. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, check out my Facebook page, Twitter page. This is for you, community. You have helped me out so much, and I just want to give back a lot more tutorials coming. Check out my game's development. Links are in the description below. Peace out.